Iran is emerging as a critical foreign policy priority for the Biden administration, but its approach seems to be profoundly different from that of its predecessor. Today, I'm joined by AFPC Senior Vice President Alon Berman to expound upon this. Hi, Alon. How are you? Hey, Annie. Doing well. Uh, great to see you. Um, so I, I think this is a really interesting topic because uh, while the Biden administration's foreign policy is still in formation, so to speak, it's already clear that Iran is going to be one of those topics where the new administration's approach differs pretty significantly from the approach taken by the last administration. Um, the Trump administration's approach, uh, colloquially known as maximum pressure, uh, has since the middle of 2018, when President Trump uh, withdrew from withdrew America from the uh, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action was really focused on uh, amplifying and expanding political and economic pressure on the Iranian regime. Uh, the, the dividends of that, I think, uh, objectively uh, are seen in, in the state of the Iranian economy, uh, in uh, the amount of available funds that Iran has uh, to fuel its regional activities and uh, the sort of isolation uh, that Iran is experiencing internationally at the moment. But the Biden administration uh, has made it very clear already that it's planning a substantially different tack, uh, less conflictual relationship with Iran. Um, and uh, it wants to re-engage. And, and this is something that, uh, that President Biden talked about when he was still on the campaign trail about the, the need for a return to the negotiating framework uh, that was implemented when he was vice president uh, by the Obama administration. And essentially to use that, the product of that negotiations, of those negotiations, um, the what's known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action as the jumping off point for a new round of talks and engagement with the Iranian regime. Um, and, and here, I think it's uh, useful to point out um, that uh, the Trump approach and, and the Biden approach really aren't that different in terms of their desired outcomes. Uh, when President Trump applied maximum pressure, the goal wasn't to change the regime in Tehran. The goal was to apply enough pressure that the Iranian regime would come back to the negotiating table and negotiate a better deal, uh, as he saw it. Um, in terms of Iranian regional influence, in terms of uh, Iranian sponsorship of terrorism, a, a deal that encompassed all of those things and therefore better served American interests. Um, the Biden administration uh, has uh, talked a lot about something very similar, talked about re-engaging with Iran, sort of dialing down the temperature um, and uh, sort of coming up with a sort of a new uh, durable framework for talks. Um, the real uh, sort of differences I think here are twofold. Uh, one is timing and the other is leverage. Um, on the timing front, uh, the real question is who goes first in this attempt to re-engage? Because it's clear that the Iranian regime um, is struggling economically and despite what it says publicly, it wants to re-engage uh, with the United States and it's planning to do so with the Biden administration. But uh, Iranian officials have said that there are uh, prerequisites, that there are things that the Biden administration uh, needs to do preemptively to prove its bona fides in order to bring Tehran back to the negotiating table. On the other hand, uh, folks like National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan have said that Iran has to return to compliance with the uh, 2015 nuclear deal first, and then the United States would engage in new talks, right? So it's a sort of a he said, she said scenario where uh, the country that goes first, uh, you know, the outcome is very different depending on who goes first and, and who blinks first. Uh, the second uh, big thing to think about and, and big thing uh, for the Biden administration to consider is the question of leverage. Uh, objectively, um, the maximum pressure policy of the Trump administration has really imparted a lot of leverage uh, in political and economic terms to the United States. And that's a leverage that the Biden administration can use in order to pressure Iran uh, to uh, hammer out a, a broader deal, uh, as it has said. Um, but it's not necessarily clear that that leverage is going to be used. Uh, there's people in the Biden camp, advisors in the Biden camp, 
that have talked already about the fact that the U.S. needs to give preemptive concessions to Iran in order to prove its bona fides, in order to uh, essentially apologize for uh, the pressure applied by uh, President Biden's predecessor. Um, and uh, if that's the case, if that's the tack that we take, we'll see a lot of preemptive lifting of sanctions, a lot of preemptive economic reengagement with Iran that will remove a significant amount of the leverage that was created by the Trump administration's maximum pressure policy uh, on the Islamic Republic. Uh, and, and by doing that, we'll, we'll really reduce our ability to shape Iranian behavior uh, and uh, narrow the sort of the potential outcome of those negotiations. Thanks so much, Alan. Take care. Thanks for having me.